Now let us proceed with the next congenital heart disease, okay, which is a sure ball in any exam. And this is Tetralogy of Fallot. Now, the first thing every student must know when they study Tetralogy Fallot is to know the components of this Tetralogy. So what are the four cardinal features? So letter P, we have pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary infundibular stenosis. We have the right ventricular hypertrophy. We have the overriding aorta. Then we have the VSD. Memorize that. Now, let me give you some things to ponder upon, testmanship-wise. This is what the examiner would most likely switch. Instead of VSD, they're going to make it ASD. Now, what is more common in children? Is it VSD or ASD? I think most common. The most common is still VSD. Remember, V, Vata. So therefore, tetralogy, you'd expect Vata, see tetralogy. Next, I think the examiner can easily swap is the RVH. Now, always remember, if it is a valvular heart disease, a valvular heart disease, congenital heart disease, or COPD, this will lead to right ventricular hypertrophy. What ventricle enlarges in hypertension? Is it the right ventricle? Okay, let's go super duper basic. What enlarges when there is systemic hypertension? Very good. It's the left ventricle. Now, what enlarges if there's a, valve, a long-standing valvular heart disease, if there's a long-standing congenital heart disease, or a long-standing COPD? What will enlarge? It's the right ventricle. Okay, the right ventricular hypertrophy usually results from those conditions. So memorize the four cardinal features of Tetralogy Fallot. Now, have you heard of Trilogy of Fallot? What is missing in Trilogy of Fallot? Again, what is missing in the Trilogy of follow. Okay, very good. What is missing here is the overriding aorta. Okay, so in trilogy, what is missing is the overriding aorta. Okay, so please take note of this. So minus one. There's a trilogy, there's a tetralogy, there is also a pentology. Now, in the pentalogy of Fallot, what is now added? So what is now added is either an ASD or a PDA. So please memorize this. So the first thing to memorize is tetralogy. Remove the overriding, it becomes trilogy add an ASD or a PDA, then this becomes the pentalogy of Fallot. Now, this is your CDB guru guide brought to you by the guru himself. Now, question, okay, what is your diagnosis here? Abdominal wall defect, an example, an omphalocele. A diaphragmatic defect, example, a diaphragmatic hernia, a sternal cleft, ectopia cardis, and the presence of a ventricular septal defect. What is your diagnosis? Okay. Please take note of this. What is your diagnosis? Stretch while you can. Okay. Stretch, stretch, stretch. So this is your question. What syndrome 
presents with an abdominal wall defect, a diaphragmatic defect, a sternal cleft, ectopia cardis, and ventricular septal defect. The answer is Pentalogive Cantrell. You are correct. CDB, you now proceed to the final round. So please take note of this. Now, if you notice, there is now the convergence of several modules we've talked about in the past. There's an omphalocele there. There is a diaphragmatic hernia. Okay. And this is new the ectopia cardis. So the congenital heart defect here is the VSD. So please take note of this. Now here is a downloaded picture showing you the multiple manifestations of pentalogy of Cantrell, okay? Now, four cardinal features. Of the four cardinal features, which is responsible for the cyanosis? Okay, which of these four is responsible for the cyanosis? Okay, very good. It is the pulmonary infundibular stenosis, the pulmonary stenosis. Now, always remember the degree of pulmonary stenosis will determine the degree of cyanosis. Okay, the degree of pulmonary stenosis will determine the degree of cyanosis. Now, question, do all patients with tetralogy follow have cyanosis? Yes or no? Do all patients with tetralogy follow present with cyanosis? So the answer is no, we also have a pink tetralogy, okay? Now, please take note of this, that the degree of, of cyanosis depends on the severity of the subpulmonary stenosis. And this is very important, most especially for determining the prognosis of your patient. So the more cyanotic, the more severe is the stenosis, the poorer is the prognosis. So we have here the famous pink Tetralogy, that means there's a tetralogy follow, but there's only a mild stenosis, hence there's no cyanosis, hence the term pink tetralogy. So for the clinical manifestations, so we have the term blue baby. So there's cyanosis, okay, that the classic tetralogy has cyanosis. There's dyspnea on exertion, and what you have to bring with you is the famous uh, cyanotic spells, which we call the tet spells. Now, what position would help decrease the TET spells? What position? Okay, there's two positions here. One, squatting. The other is knee chest position. Okay, very good. Squatting and the knee chest position. Now question, what drug can we give for the medical management of tetralogy? Okay, what beta blocker? Okay, specify the beta blocker. Okay, it's going to be propanolol. Okay, propanolol. Beta blocker, propanolol. Now, the boot shaped heart, this is also known as coer and sabo. So, here you see the boot shaped heart here. Now, question what is responsible for the boot shaped heart? Okay, of the four cardinal features of tetralogy, which is responsible for the boot-shaped heart. Okay, very good. It is the right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, the right ventricular hypertrophy is responsible for the boot-shaped heart. Now, lastly, one of the treatments, okay, the standard definitive treatment of tetralogy follow is surgery we perform an aorticopulmonary bypass. My question is this, what is the name of the procedure? Okay, the most common aorticopulmonary bypass, which we perform for patients with 
severe tetralogy. Okay, very good. This is your Blaylock Tausig shunt. Okay, the Blaylock Tausig shunt. Here, this is your aorta. This is your pulmonary trunk. This is your bypass. Okay, the aortico pulmonary bypass. This is the Blaylock Tausig shunt. So that ends our module on tetralogy of fallow.